Hello, everyone, and welcome to Momentum Boost. I'm your host, Adrian Gold Davis, and I'm truly honored to be with you today. So this month here at Momentum, we're talking about Israel, which is one of our core goals, engaging with Israel. But what does that even mean to engage with Israel? You know, it's not just to know about Israel. It's not to just form opinions about Israel. What it is, is the desire to dive in, to explore, to learn, and even to struggle. I mean, after all, that's where our forefather Jacob got his second name, Yisrael, which means to struggle with God. So today, in honor of Yom Ha'atzmaut, which is Israel's Independence Day, we are celebrating our homeland in a most delicious way. Well, look at what do we Jews most express our celebration with? Let's be honest, it's that standard holiday refrain, right? They tried to kill us, we won, let's eat. And yeah, one of the ways to engage with Israel is to explore its extraordinary culinary scene. You know, with thousands of years of immigration and ingathering from around the world, Israeli cuisine is on the international stage, even while there is always an ongoing dispute about some of its origins. But did you know that Israel is known as one of the most vegan countries in the world, with one of the highest percentages of vegans globally? Even Domino's pizza chain in Israel offers vegan cheese options at all of its outlets. And even within the IDF, vegan soldiers, they're provided with vegan meals and they even get leather-free boots and helmets. Wow. So to celebrate Israel's independence, we thought we would explore a beautiful market in Tel Aviv, which is called the Levinsky Market. It's kind of like a microcosm of Israel, well, at least around the food. And our tour guides today are going to be Panina and Alex from Delicious Israel. So first, Alex. Alex Lewis, Delicious Israel's director of deliciousness is the queen of cuisine. She can be spotted all the time enjoying Tel Aviv food scene on any given day of the week. Now she grew up as a Juban, which is a Jewish Cuban in Florida. And her family's favorite hobby always was and still is restaurant hopping. They judge each place by the quality of their bread basket and the cleanliness of their bathroom. This I relate to. And she earned her bachelor's degree in hospitality and tourism. And there is nothing she loves more than making people happy, especially when it comes to food. So with over three years of working and specializing in Israeli tourism, Alex's education and her expertise, they shine through when she's arranging adventures for our treasured, delicious Israel clients. And when she's not snacking, Alex loves playing fetch with her dog and lounging by the sea. I think we can be friends. Now, Penina Meyerson is one of Delicious Israel's expert guides. She recently moved from the UK to Israel, and it was a decision she said that was 50% motivated by the food and 50% by the beach. And she did this after completing her undergraduate degree in archaeology at Oxford. So her passion for digging things up and unearthing treasures really makes her unnatural at finding just the right place in the shook. And when she's not studying for her master's, she can be found food shopping or whipping up a recipe from her extensive cookbook collection. And her sweet tooth and that need to feed have made her the subject of a series of baking bans imposed by her friends and family. Although she firmly believes there's no such thing as too much cake. Ladies, take it away. Hi, my name's Panina. I'm here in the Levinsky Market today and we're going to have a bit of an explore together. Um, I don't know if you can tell from the accent, I'm not originally from here. I made Aliyah about a year and a half ago. I've been living in Israel ever since. Um, and I'm a huge foodie. So what did I find when I came here? All of these food inspirations, people from all over the world settling here, bringing with them their own tastes and flavours. And that's what we're going to see in the market today. Lots to try, lots to taste, and I'm just excited to share it with you. So Levinsky Market started in the 1920s and 30s, um, when a group of immigrants came to this area, mainly from um, Greece and Turkey. So what was this area then? Absolutely nothing. You had the first neighborhood in Tel Aviv, in Rothschild Boulevard that started in 1909. And when these group of immigrants came to Tel Aviv, they couldn't afford to settle there. 
So they started up a community here. And what do you do when you bring your community from somewhere else? You just plonk it right somewhere different with all the things that come with it. And the most important thing of all is the food. So people come, they bring with them their taste, their flavors, and they start selling to their neighbors. Over the years, the market started up completely organically because of that. Um, it used to be a big open air market like the Carmel market, like the markets you'd see in Turkey and Egypt. Um, but when the area became part of Tel Aviv properly in the 1940s, they said, we don't want another market. We've already got Carmel there. We don't want the mess. This is going to be a zone for industry. We don't want any of that. So they cleared out all these open air stores. And what's remained here today are the places that had shop fronts. So a lot of what we'll see in the tour um, is kind of, it doesn't look like anything special. And then you get inside and it's this like food wonderland. Um, and this street's a great place to talk a little bit about the history of the Levinsky market. Um, so where we're standing today to this side used to be an ice factory. Um, and because of the ice factory on the other side of the street over here, we had a whole load of fish delicatessens. Now there's only one remaining, Lupo's right over here, they're closed for today. They had a really busy day on Friday, so they're not open today. Um, but they're still making the traditional smoked fish. Their family comes from Romania. They're now in their third generation. Um, and the guy who's running it had a job in computer engineering, but what did he see? That if he didn't come back to keep the shop going, nobody was going to. So that's why we have one remaining, the rest of them no longer here. Um, but what can we see on this street corner now? So no longer this traditional, you know, small businesses. What do we have right here? Our big pizza shop, not classic Israeli food. But what happened in kind of the 90s, a big bohemian community moved in and following on the back of them were the hipsters in kind of the early um, noughties. And what does every hipster neighborhood need? Somewhere good to eat. We've got a coffee shop on the corner over here. And that's kind of the culture of the market today. The old, the traditional, these family run businesses mixed with a little spice of something new as the population changes, as Israel changes. And we're really gonna see that through the taste of the market. So let's head in, we can meet some people. Here we are at Cafe Levinsky 41. It's not really known by that. It's known by the thing that it makes, which is this drink called Gazoz. Gazoz started off, it's got a long history in Israel, originally it was this really sweet, fruity, artificial syrup topped with soda water. What is it now? Benny, the owner of this place, has kind of done his own twist. So what we have here are all locally grown fermented syrups. He makes them himself with fruit, seasonal fruits from the market, topped off with herbs that he grows in his own herb garden. Not your general gazoz, but something a little bit special. Again, that spirit of the old and the new in the market and extremely delicious. With that comes, you know, the Israeli spirit of entrepreneurship. So we've got Benny's own invention, the spoon straw here, which we're going to use to get all those bits from the bottom. Um, I'm going to have a taste. <laughs> mm, so I can... It's different every day. You come, you say, I just want a gazoz, and they're going to give you whatever they've got in house. I can see in mine, um, watermelon season starting here. The first one showed up in the market just a couple of weeks ago. Pomegranate, some dates in there, some apple, and on top are herbs, our fresh mint, hibiscus, all the tastes and flavors of the market in one very refreshing drink. Here we are at Yom Tov. There are Turkish delicatessen. Um, and they're going to talk to us a little bit about the history of their shop and what we're going to be trying today. So this is Eitan. He's here ready to tell us about his family Hello. Business. Yes, my name is Eitan and welcome to Yom Tov Delhi. Everything started in 1947. Our grandpa opened his store in Turkey in a neighborhood that called Kuledibi in Istanbul. And after 22 years, he decided to make aliyah to Israel and to copy the store. And he asked all the Turkish people that came before him in the 50s to where can I copy the store and still be respectful. They told him just Levinsky Market. Levinsky Market was the best market in the whole wide world and still is today, thank God. My father met my mother here as a client and then we came. 
I'm here for 20 years, also my brother, and we developed the store to add the tasters that you can see here. Um, cheese from over, all over the world, artichokes that we are making, and grape leaves that are our grandpa rolling, stuff hibiscus flower with cream cheese from goat and sheep, and uh, stuff with patio pepper, squares of feta cheese with basil paste and the tomatoes, and mix of olives from our land and uh, imported. And confit garlic, I forget. Yeah, don't forget the garlic. Okay, Panina, obviously I know that this is falafel, but what are these delicious sauces that are partnering with it? Okay, so we're doing our unofficial tour of Israeli condiments today. We have the triple threat over here. This is your tahina, tahini, the sesame paste, number one. A little bit creamy. Here we have something spiced, but not spicy. It's called amba. It's an Iraqi condiment brought over with Jews from Iraq who worked on the spice trade. So it's made with fermented mangoes and curry spices, a little bit like a mango chutney, but sour and very strong. And here we have our spicy sauce, hug. It's a Yemenite spicy sauce made with hot peppers, cilantro. Um, and this one is special. Every family has their own recipe. It's like you eat the best one and you know, you can mix and match. You can go for one than the others. It's all your own. I think I'm gonna go for the amba. And what we're looking for in our falafel is really crispy on the outside, really soft on the inside and green in the middle from all those fresh herbs and spices. You can see mine, that's exactly what we got. Okay, you have it. No, you should have it. No, I think you should have it. <laughs> Panina, where are we? Because everything smells delicious right. and looks incredible. What is going on here? So here we are at our bakery, Hamotzi Lechem. Um, it's not a Friday. If it was, there's no chance we'd be in here because the lines would be around the block for their khala. But what we have today is equally special. We're gonna taste their chocolate babka, which is absolutely the best in the country. Um, and a vegan treat for the vegan capital of the world, um, a peanut butter chocolate ball. And we're eating it all surrounded by our Israeli flags, ready in the spirit of Yom Hatzmaut, ready to celebrate, to eat, to enjoy, to be with friends, and to celebrate our amazing country. Ready to taste? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Mm. It's gooey, it's chewy, and it's everything you want to eat. Wow. This is Sabih, and as we're celebrating Yom Ha'atzmaut, it's time to talk about what Israeli food is. So this dish right here is our only Israeli food made right here in the country. We can prove it to you. So the story goes, Mr. Sabih was a bus driver, and every day he'd eat the traditional Iraqi breakfast, which is our eggplant, we can see them inside, a boiled egg, and some potatoes, maybe with some tahina on top, some salad. One day he's in a huge rush, and he says to his wife, please can you just put it for me inside a pit? I'll eat it with one hand on the way to work. So that's what she does, except what did they find out? It's even better inside a pitta. Something about the combination or the flavors is kind of just one magical bite. Of course, it took off. Now you can find Sabih all over Israel. Um, but we believe that this one is one of the best. So you can see a layer of everything in every bite. It's made like a piece of art. Um, and that means I'm going to have the perfect first mouthful. Cheers. It's messy, but it's delicious. There's salad, there's the eggplant, it's salty, it's sweet, it's everything all in one go. I'm gonna keep eating. Okay, here we are at our spice shop. Levinsky's known as our spice and dried goods market. So we're gonna hear a little bit about the history of the shop, who's working here now, and have a little try of some of the amazing spices they're producing. First of all, the spices, our spices in handmade, we make everything here. As I showed you before, we make the kamun in the machine here. And uh, it's a third gen generation here. Me and my father and my son, we make all everything here. 
It's uh, very unique spices, as we see here. And uh, should we have a taste? Yeah, you can. Do you taste. want to tell me yeah. what we've got? We got uh, sumac. It's a Persian uh, tradition of uh, food, and we have Hawaii's for soup. It's a Yemeni, and we have the zaatar, very famous from uh, Israel. A mix of all our cultures together. So yeah. let's have a taste. Yeah, taste Sumac's my favorite. Yeah, it's sour and it's salty. Mm -hmm. It's very good. It's got like a lemony flavor, yeah. super fresh. Put it on salads, put it on avocado. Yeah, on uh, onion. On we the Persian uh, put on a uh, kebab, or you can put it on hamburger. I'm getting recipe recommendations. And uh, on the rice <laughs> after it's uh, done, yeah. Okay. And the Hawaii uh, for soup is uh, for all kind of soup, like Yemeni soup, like. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, sheep soup, you know? Sheep? Lamb, lamb soup, lamb soup, like Yamani, you know? And vegetable soup. And what have we got inside? It's become it? very unique, you know? The soup has uh, become very unique, very special when you put this, yeah? Only me, yeah? Only, <laughs> only mine, yeah? So it's got turmeric? <laughs> what else? Turmeric, uh, coriander, cumin. You have muscat, you have uh, ha a cardamom, and many things uh, very secrets that I cannot uh, <laughs> tell about that. And the zaatar mm. is good for labane, and good for uh, a pita with zaatar, with olive oil. Okay, yeah? I'm going to have a try. And yeah. this is the blend you make yourself? Yeah, of course, of Amazing. course. Amazing. So it's also zaatar? with sumac and sesame and uh, the zaatar. The zaatar is a leaf, it's zaatar, called pisa the, the, in English. The zaatar leaves is over there, you see, we ground it. it. Yeah. And they dry it, grind it, make it into yeah. this beautiful blend and it goes on absolutely everything. Yeah, yeah. This is the best. So, Panina, this coffee smells better than any Starbucks I've ever had. What's what inside? Getting? What can you smell? I smell a little bit of cinnamon. Okay. And I'm not sure what else. So you're spelling the magic of Hawaii, our sweet Hawaii for coffee. Mm. It's got cinnamon, ginger, cloves, nutmeg, all those sweet warm spices with a bit of a kick from the ginger. So it's really going to wake you up. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately awake and so sweet and so delightful. I come wow. with that every morning, you're going to have the best day. <laughs> Love it. Okay, Panina, this is quite the spread. I need you to break it down for me. What's going on over here? Okay, so here we have our barecas, the star of the show. We're eating them today with potato. We're going classic. Um, we originally a Turkish dish, but it made it to Israel and it blew up. So everybody's eating it. This is one of the best places to eat them. And we're eating it with a hard boiled egg, um, some spicy sauce and resek, which is grated tomato. So you have a bit of the fresh, a bit of the salty, a bit of the spicy and our Syrian olives. They're a little bit bitter, but they're going to add another flavor. So dig on in. We've got every kind of flavor happening <laughs> on this plate. Oh my goodness. Got a taste of everything on one. Ready. Crunchy, soft, spicy, fresh, everything I'd want in a meal in one bite. Here we are to taste some chalva. What's chalva? Chalva is made from the same thing as our tahina, um, the ground up sesame into a paste with a little bit of sugar and then it's set. To that you can add whatever you want. Here we are at our Baskin Robbins of chalva. We have however many flavors and tastes you could want. We're going to try a few today. Um, this shop's really unique. They're the best chalva in the whole country, I think. Um, they work according to all their own recipes with a factory up north who are just making for them. Um, and today we're going to have a try of some of their key flavors. Okay, this is pistachio. So we've got our classic chalva with the pistachios on top and inside. Mmm, so good. How you know it's good halva is you can taste the sesame flavor. It's not too sweet, but you can taste everything coming through. It's the best. I'm going to finish the whole slice. Yom Atzmaut Okay, that was fun. I can't wait to go back and meet these incredible Israelis and taste that mouth-watering food. But until then, 
Happy birthday, Israel. You are 74 years young, and I can't wait to see what you're going to show the world in the coming years. So from me, Adrian Gold Davis, and from all of us at Momentum, remember that as we learn and grow and eat together, that the highest form of wisdom will always be kindness. Good night, everyone. I've got a thousand questions coming from deep within. Want to cut through the clutter? I need to know that my next movement.